did the German culture like influence his work, like notably, or? Uh, not then, um, not then, but later on, I think that you can't understand Craig uh, unless you understand that he was a European. Uh, he essentially had to reject England. Like Lord Byron, he had to leave, leave England uh, because uh, England just wouldn't understand what he was trying to do. In spite of the fact that he wrote books in English, um, they didn't understand his theories. But the Europeans did, and many of his, uh, many of his great um, uh, fr friends later on were, were German. Count Kessler, good example. Count Kessler, with whom he uh, did the Cranach Press Hamlet, good German friend. English are very traditional. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely right. <laughs> when, I mean, I think you're, 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 you're absolutely right. I mean, the difference between England and Europe was that Europe was experimenting, had been experimenting for about 20, 20 years before Craig ever went over there. Mm. I mean, uh, the, uh, some of the uh, European playwrights were exploring uh, subject matter that was completely unacceptable in England. I mean, Ibsen, uh, the, the great Norwegian uh, uh, dramatist, um, I mean, was talking about venereal disease, for example, a whole play, uh, 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 women's rights, uh, I mean, in the, a doll's house. Um, the um, heroine, at the end of the play, uh, leaves her husband, who's, and she was treating her like a doll, uh, and, and actually the, bashes the back door, you hear the, the end of the play, and uh, people said that you heard back doors breaking, clashing throughout Europe afterwards because when people saw the play. Um, so it was a revolutionary theatre, uh, much more so. And also in production too, uh, there was a little German state called Sax Meinerhen and the Duke of Sax Meinerhen had his own company and he was uh, introducing brand new ideas, particularly uh, about um, the extras in a play. Every single extra in a Sax Meinerhen production uh, had his own or her own own part. They weren't just merely extras, oh, one of the 100 that Irving used uh, in his Othello or something like that. Uh, they were real individuals. There were all sorts of ideas floating about in Europe, some of which uh, Craig read about and adapted. Uh, a good example for that would be uh, there was a Swiss man called Adolf Appia, and uh, he was very interested in lighting. Uh, and lighting effects, um, and many of Craig's ideas on using light on, in, in the theatre come from Appiah. They're slightly different, but he certainly knew Appiah's work and had met Appiah. So, I mean, I think that, you know, Europe is absolutely vital uh, for, for, for Craig. Did he do any, like, collaborations with other People. Well, I mean, yeah, yes, I mean, his most famous collaboration was with Stanislavski, the great uh, Russian director, who invited him over uh, to um, uh, Moscow uh, to direct Hamlet. And this was a production that took them, both men, uh, two years. Uh, in gestation. I mean, they worked at it for two years. Craig went over to Moscow for at least three occasions, worked with Stanislavski, and then at the beginning of uh, 1912, uh, he actually produced the play, and it was revolutionary. I mean, it was it, people had never seen uh, a Hamlet uh, like this before. And it, there was a lot of Stanislavski uh, in it, as well as Craig. Uh, the main ideas were Craig's. But uh, he had some ideas that were not practical. And uh, so Stanislavski had to tone them down a little bit. And so consequently, um, uh, eventually, it was a compromise. Um, <clears throat> let, me give you, let me give you a, a good example of that. In the famous uh, soliloquy, to be or not to be, um, Craig wanted death to approach Hamlet. Come in, stand behind Hamlet, and then when Hamlet decides not to commit suicide, to disappear on the opposite side of the stage. They tried it. They experimented in rehearsal, but it didn't really work. People wondered who this strange person simulating death was, and so consequently, eventually, they abandoned it. But it was a, a very 
good idea. And in fact, uh, here, I don't know whether you can see this, this is a black figure. This is, let me just explain what this is. This is one of the models that Craig took with him to Moscow. Um, and it's Hamlet. Can you see and Hamlet? And can you see a figure behind Hamlet? And that is his daemon or death standing behind him. Now, that is what Craig wanted to happen on stage. But sadly, it didn't because it didn't work on stage. But it works pictorially. And so consequently, this was originally white, a white piece of wood. Just feel it, how light it is. Very light, and it's, it's because it's made of fruit wood. It's probably made of pear tree or something like that, all right? Now then, what he did was, uh, after he came back from Moscow, he, he decided, wouldn't that be interesting if I put some ink on it and then put it down like this on a piece of paper uh, and see what happens? And I will show you what happens. That is what happens. So that, in fact, let me show it. Can you see it clearly? Now, what we've got there is a black, what is one of his black figures. And this, in fact, is the actual model that he took with him of Hamlet to Moscow, now in England, inked and actually made very, very dramatic uh, pictorially.